Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the 1904 podcast from the Hall Daily Mail. I'm with this morning, Burnsy. Are you all right? Good. Uh, enjoyed the weekend. Uh, cracking game. Cracking performance. So we'll talk about that today. Fletch, hello. Hello, hello. Sorry for being late, gentlemen. I know we're recording now, but I think the viewers need to know that my timekeeping is shocking. And I echo what Bernsey says relating to the football. And Captain Prutz, how the devil are you? I'm good. I'm good. I like a bit of, um, was it, self-regulation from Fletch there, taking ownership yes. of disgusting behaviour. But um, no, <laughs> all good, mate. All good. Looking forward to the chat of, after a nice, a nice bouncy weekend for City. You were at the um, EFL Awards on Sunday night, weren't you? You uh, had I the was. pleasure of seeing Liam down there and, and Jacob Greaves named in the team of, of the year. Um, yeah. A big achievement for Jacob, wasn't it, that? Yeah, huge and deservedly so. Um, he's a big bugger in real life, isn't he? He's, he's a big guy. Yeah. You right, mate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've got that wonderful, the, 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 the aloofness that wonderful, uh, that good football, the modern day footballer has. Almost like, you're right, mate. Oh, oh. End the combo. Cheers, Jacob. Let's see if I it's um it was good. I mean, so we saw there was I saw Crescentio Somerville and, and Kane and Jewsby Hall deep in chat in the corner. Um so it was good. It was, it was a real nice blend of people. Liam turned up fashionably late because he's dead cool. Um, but he was um yeah, sat there in good spirits and and again, with, with all the good work that he's done, I was chuffed to bits to see him in the running for for manager of the season. Um but no, a good night was had by all, my friend. Lovely stuff. Maybe, maybe Fletch is a Liam Rossini timekeeping um, tribute act. That's what it is. He's just being cool, Fletch. Just, yeah. you know. Lateness is, you're lateness with the, is the new trend. <laughs> right, okay. It's all right. I'll see you on the next train, though, Fletch. Yes. <laughs> so, Saturday, uh, big 3 0 uh, victory for City, three points, a clean sheet. And for me, probably the most. When I look back at the, the, the home form over the year, and we've talked about this a lot, uh, good and bad and, and indifferent, but I think probably the, one of the most complete performances of the season in terms of the way they attacked, they defended relatively well, they needed you know, a couple of moments of, of like Matty Jacob off the line and one or two other, but you're going to get that in a championship game. But in terms of the, 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 they needed to win, they, they took the game away from QPR in the first half, which we've been calling, on, calling for a long time for them to do. And, and, and Fletch, that was a... A really, really good, solid, dominant performance, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, 100%. Um, I think the only games where you would relate it to being comfortable in terms of scoreline would be Cardiff and Rotherham. But when that first goal went in, it felt like Millwall all over again, high energy, high intensity. And then straight away after we went 1-0 up, I'm thinking in my mind, go and get that second. Yeah, Do something yeah. that we haven't seen for a while. Get that second, that will just settle them down. And that's what it transpired to be. And... I think the game was too far out of sight for QPR before they really started to rally. But even when they did rally, we had people in the right positions like Matty Jacob on the line, for example, to repel whatever QPR chucked at us. Burns, you were there. What was your thoughts on it? Well, there was no dilly-dallying, no shilly-shallying, was there? They just got on with it. They were quicker. Um, you know, Philogene, for instance, had his best game in ages. I thought he was superb, mm. but the, 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 there was no frippery around his play. He did it, you know, got the ball and did something with it, whether it was going past a man and then getting a pass off or getting a shot off or, or getting the pass off straight away. And we've said it all season. We, I'm sick of saying it. Play at pace. They look so much better. And it, it was a joy to watch. I mean, the quality of the goals was, was fantastic. And there, there was a trick two fan did at halfway I, I think before the first goal and mm. I still can't get my head around it whether it was a drag back wrap around or a drag back <laughs> run around at halfway I don't know what it was I've not seen it again nobody's put it on on Twitter um but it it, it was just magic and I, I still don't quite know what he what he did did any, anybody want to enlighten me it was drag back run around I, what do they call it I can't Perhaps remember you'll have done it somewhere <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously rubbish, Bernsey. I'd, I'd have yeah. attempted it, and then you'd be saying, "Why is Prutz eating grass?" Because he attempted a drag back run around, and now he's face <laughs> down in the centre circle, and his numbers now on the board. We've had enough. Get <laughs> yeah, no. off. 
<laughs> yeah. I ran, there's one, yeah. Once, it reminds me about coming back from injury at Southampton a very, very long time ago when you're just trying to get up to the speed of the game. It was the last game of the season, nothing to play for. And I come on. And then, um, there's, I mean, you got a, a little ripple coming back on because I'd been out for a while. I mean, not that I was remotely um, imperative to what they were doing. And picked the ball up just in halfway in our own half and then built up a bit of speed. And then by the halfway line, like the, the top half of the body was just going faster than the bottom half. <laughs> just overran the ball and just bosh, fell down. I got like an ironic, almost kind of, oh, and the clap from the crowd. Which is, you start, Christ, I think my time is done, isn't it? <laughs> it went, people are pitying him from the stands not, and not forgetting some people sent off. Um, but go, going back to the game, the, I mean, you, you'll do well, I think, to see three as good goals in one game this season. I mean, I watched. I was watching um, Chelsea Everton last night. Some good goals in that, but I think, especially in the Championship, three very, very good goals, um, very direct goals, and that's not to take away any of the skill involved in it. Um, I was unknown exactly want, what he wanted to do with it. Um, that first time ball around the corner to Carvalho was just a thing of beauty, wasn't that's it? Great. And then again, you talk about the overthinking side of the game sometimes, Burnsy, but the third goal just. Uh, that, that collective as it comes out of everyone going, it's it, and it just it's it, and it goes in. You kind of go, wow, football's a wonderfully simple game when you do things really quickly and really straightforwardly. Um, now, take into account who the who they were playing. QPR have been better under uh, Marty Cifuentes, but they've been at the wrong end of the table most of the season because of one thing: they haven't been playing well. So City should be beating a team like that to keep hopes of the playoffs alive. And um I just like, like I said, I just think on days like that, when the atmosphere is like that, when the performance is like that, and it, this is not, this is not meant to kind of take pull the rug out of, uh, under from under anyone's feet with it all, but it, it's amazing. It's a wonderful thing to say, but you kind of go, oh, there's so many games when if we'd have done this. I mean, you, you, City could be sat where West Brom are. Mm-hmm. They could be knocking on the door of where Southampton are, um, and it doesn't help to think hypothetically and, and, and down that, that kind of what if road, but. When they do that, they show exactly what they're capable of. And then it kind of reaffirms the very positive podcast that we do, where you go, two fans great, Cavalio's great, Philogene's great. They've got players that can change football matches. Um, and just hopefully this is the remit between now and the end of the season. And then we see what everyone else does and see where they end up. I thought what was telling on on, on Saturday, and it, it surrounds Philogene. I know, Burnsy, you just touched on him as well there. I, I think... Probably three weeks ago, when the ball drops to, to um, Jaden, he takes a touch. He takes it under control and then tries to get a shot away and he, he yeah. gets more forward and the, the, the chance goes. But because he's got two and two and he's confident again, he's, he's, he's feeling back in the rhythm that he's got after his, after his injury layoff. He, he's, he's feeling good, but it, you know, he sees it like a bloody, you know, a, a, well, something massive. It comes out of the air and he just wallops it. And that is... Get in touch with things that are massive, please, on the 19 <laughs> Tell the badly there's an allergy. <laughs> Don't, because we'll end up talking about rutting stags again. Um, <laughs> one, of my, one of my favourite episodes of the, the podcast so far, Prups and his rutting stags in pre-season. We'll, we'll revisit that in July. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the fact how it comes out the sky and he just batters it. And it's, it is so simple when things like that happen. But to do that, Prups, you've got to be, players have got to be confident, haven't they? They've got to be at ease with... <clears throat> themselves and, and where they are personally but also as a collective as a team and I think the, the quality of the goals that we saw mm. I even think back to Cardiff what 10 days ago and Carvalho's goal there where they played some lovely lovely football uh, Abdush played it played it into Tufan Tufan rolled it through for Carvalho and it was mm. almost an identical setup you know this a bit further a bit further yeah. out admittedly um, but that those three in particular Tufan Carvalho and Abdush seem to have developed a really, really nice relationship. Yeah, and um, the, the the really kind of effervescent way that Abdush goes around manoeuvring a football and, I mean, he's it, it, got that kind of energy that when he gets the ball, you think, oh, something might happen here, which is great. And um, again, maybe that's in contrast sometimes to the way that City create the build-up play. We, 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 um, and so when you, using words like ponderous, that I mean, that's that's possibly an unfair adjective because that is only a couple of steps away from being patient, isn't it? But I I understand um, Liam's approach to it. And as I've said many, many times before, 
a, a highly um, educated footballing individual. So the, the, there will be so much thought that goes into the way they play football. It's not a case of just going, right, sod it, we're going to do this, lads. Keep the ball for ages. And if you get anyone in the goal, try and do something. There, there, there won't be any of that at all. There, there, there will be a lot of thought, a lot of work on the training ground because of the player that he, uh, manager that he is. He's so very kind of um, methodical. But sometimes, just before well, we started, just as we were chatting, just before we started recording, Burns, wasn't it? It was sometimes the 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 genius of simplicity is exactly what you need. Good players doing very good things without really thinking about it, doing it instinctively. Jaden doing his bit instinctively. That ball around the corner from um, uh, two fan to yes, the run's got to be there, but he's also got to believe that he can play that ball and that there's a gap there and he can carry out which he does. So he does because he doesn't even think about it. Comes through him, bounces it round the corner. Um, Fabio doesn't even think about poking the ball over the goalkeeper and it goes in. And then from two fans, for the, the, the opening goal of the game, which really does set the tone. Thing of beauty. And uh, you are just sat there sometimes scratching your head thinking, well, you've, you've got to really go like this against most teams. Yes, some of the some of the teams further up the division, Leicester, Southampton, etc., maybe tweaks to that. But from what I've seen and what we've discussed over the course of the season, and, it, and it's going to sound stu stupidly commonsensical, is City are at the best when they absolutely go after teams and play at a high tempo, aren't they? You, yes, it's nice to get the ball and show that you've kept the ball for a long time, but the energy and the dynamism that's in that team, I think, has sometimes not been pushed to its full potential. Whether that's the players, the staff, the management, the way they're setting up, I don't know. But the, the players must enjoy playing more like that than keeping the ball for hours on end, mustn't they? Yeah, I'd ab ab absolutely agree. Just on Abdush, because we've had quite a lot of response on Twitter. DRN Tiger for Life says, forget playoffs or no playoffs. Uh, just revel in the wonder that is Abdul Shomo. Uh, I know he's still raw, but always looks interested and wants the ball. He was my man of the match versus QPR and will be brilliant next season if nurtured correctly. A lovely player to watch live. I noticed the, um, the club, um, somebody asked them for a heat map of Abdush's performance which was, um, I don't know whether people are into that. I've seen a heat map, chaps, of Baz's uh, performance at the MKM on Saturday. It's centred round the buffet. Hey. The red spot is round the food <laughs> in the buffet. My name is not Mike White. I am not Mike White, repeat. I don't stand in the buffet queue <laughs> for hours on end. <laughs> oh, dear. No, it was, it, he's, 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 um, he's a delight to watch. Um, Abdush and um, great credit to him. We, we've touched on two fun there, uh, and we mentioned Cardiff. Was it Cardiff earlier in the season when he had the, the wonderful performance? Um, can he now to to Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, can it? Can we now? Can 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 we now between now and the end of the season see see him do it on a consistent basis? Because that would be my criticism. And he goes back to a former club. Where he well, basically the fans thought he was Bobbins uh, on Saturday. So it'll be interesting to see if he can, you know, metaphorically stick a couple of fingers up to the to the Watford fans on Saturday. So did Dan Gosling, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I think mm. uh, Tufan is 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 one of those players, isn't he? When he's on it, um, he's a, he's a, he's a genuine joy to watch, and probably technically, there's there can't be many better players in the in the division when Tufan is is at his best and. I thought he played really well at Cardiff. I thought he was excellent against Middlesbrough, which I also thought was a really, really good performance. And um, but for a couple of again, a bit like Leicester, a couple of moments of defensive. Uh, I don't know what the phrase is without being dis too disrespectful, but lapses of concentration and poor defensive moments, they win that game. But two fan again on Saturday, and his goal, we were right behind it in the in the West End, and it was just a, as, as Prut said, it was a thing of beauty. Prut on two fan, um, mm. on his day, he is. He is magical, isn't he? Yeah. Just needs more of those days. I think yeah. the fact that we're talking here and Benzie was pulling out um, another similar performance. I mean, that that inherently possibly is, but not where the problem lies, but what, that's where the issue is. If, if you can only think about possibly one other standout game, and that's not uh, doing a disservice to what Ozan's done over the course of the season, but... If you can only think about one of the game where he's had that much of an effect, then there is a bit of a problem because he's brought he's been brought into effect football matches, hasn't he? Was it? It was was it you, Fletcher Baz, that had said um, there was a, a stat about his assists, which <clears> was you kind of it, it was yeah, it was comically low, wasn't it? It was, it was yeah, there was that was it. 
which I mean, again, assists sometimes when you look at them and you see how they're quantified, it does leave you scratching your head a little bit. But when you see that in kind of black and white, you think, well, if if, if it's not a, a big tally in the assists, then you want nine or ten goals, eleven goals, don't you? That's that's the kind of way that you look at that. It'd be great to have both of them because I think inherently that's what he's been brought in for. But that's something that you need to address because if he's not doing that, it's great if he's working from the front and starting the press and all that. But he's been brought into effect football matches. The same with, with Fabio Cavallio. And again, I think it was your stat, Fletch, about how many goals it scored in relation to the games it played. And you kind of went, oh, Christ, that's it. He has been really quite effective. And if you spread it over the course of a season, then you're knocking on some decent numbers there. But again, it goes back to what we've, we discussed about the players that came in, about what they have come in for. I mean, you need... You need ratters, you need players that can be nasty, that can shore up the defence. But what wins you, what what changes things um, is what players such as Ozan and, and Jaden can do, which is which is go out to win games, not just be there to not lose. You know, do you know what I mean? It, it, I was chatting to Lee Bromby last night, who kind of works in and around um, uh, the Harrogate area. Um, and he's obviously director of football at Huddersfield as they got to the player final former football himself, and I was at Leeds with him. And he, he was talking about what Huddersfield Town are now, at the bottom at the wrong end of the table, and Danny Ward still leading the line. And Danny was brought in under his stewardship. And that's he, inherently there's the difference. You can defend for your lives for all, all as much as you want, but to progress, you need goal scorers. Look, I mean, where would Blackburn be without Sammy Smodix? Probably relegated, to be brutally honest, wouldn't they? So that goes to show, and it, again, it becomes a bit more hypothetical, Blackburn have got something out of Sammy, which, whether that's a new standard that he set for himself or a purple patch, we shall soon see. But again, if you're a City fan, you're going, where's our Sammy Smodix? Why haven't we got someone that's scoring 24 goals in a season? Because Sammy's path to Blackburn is kind of Colchester, he's been at Braintree, he's been round and about. Recruitment-wise, why haven't whole City found Sammy? Why, why haven't they? Obviously, sliding doors, I understand there's different um, factions that come into it. But again, it goes back to showing that the, the, the players that get you up into the top six are those ones that do it week in, week out, and not just kind of go, oh, he had a great game six months ago, and then he's had another good game this past weekend. Go on, Fletch. Just to touch on Prutz's point there, I think it's like you say, sliding doors. If you have players like Carvalho, if you'd had Delap fit all season, I think they would be knocking on the door of 20 goals. Um, the other thing I was going to raise about two fan, it's something I, I have written down all the time at the moment, is... And, when, and it always comes out when um, Tufan has a good game, is that Cardiff's manager thinks he's good enough to go to Turkey to be in the Euro 2024 squad. So there is a, a carrot that's been dangled for Ozan, if that's how he motivates himself. If he thinks he can get in Turkey's squad, then obviously he's going to give it that extra 10% on what he already puts out. But you can tell when he when he hits a purple patch, the game looks so much easier for him. He seems to just play with a freedom as well which goes part and parcel really with Abdush because when they play together, they just look so well connected. It's um, it's a joy to watch. On Tufan, it's his, for me, it's his fitness. Um, there's always been question marks about Tufan's... Uh... Maybe they've not dangled enough carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Dangling some else. <laughs> there's always been question marks about his fitness and the fact he's not maybe kept himself in tip-top shape. But I think since... And I, I had this conversation with Liam Rossini on Saturday about, about this specific subject. Um, and I think Liam, you know, alluded to the fact that when he first arrived, Tufan thought that everything was all about being on the ball and not so much the work off the ball. And obviously, a Liam Rossini team is is very much about what you do on the ball. But more importantly, you know, the running off it, you know, the, the, the press, the closing down, you know, the, the energy within the side. And I think Ozan has bought into that and he, he, he looks a lot leaner. He looks a lot fitter, and with that comes clarity of thought. Um, he's able to, you know, bust up and down the pitch a bit more, uh, and then at the end of it, pr- giving them product. Um, he does. Th- he does need to affect games more. I think that is the that is a fair criticism of him across the season. Is you know he scored nine goals this season, which is you know he scored eight last year. He scored nine this year in I think in something like ten or eleven last game. So he's he's already beaten his target. You'd back him to get double figures, which I think for a player, you know, that's not been a regular starter throughout the season. I, I still think he's a decent return. It, should, it could be better. It should be better. But I think... Most he's ever be, had in a season, Buzz. Exactly. So, you know. Yeah, and I think that is based around the fact he's he's sharper, he's fitter. Um, 
And I think I think he's enjoying himself. He looks like he's enjoying himself. And I like a, I come back to that goal on Saturday, and it was just it was it was genuine quality. That is international quality. And you know, Turkey got hammered a couple of weeks ago in the last international break. And I think was it six 0 in Austria or something. And their fans were were absolutely raging with the manager, and they want changes going into the Euros. Um, you know, so maybe Ozan's got. A, a, I think it's an outside chance. He he's not been in the squad for quite a while. It'd be a bit of a wild card, but you know, he's how old is he? Bad. Twenty nine. Hmm. So I mean, he's been to, he's, he's been prime. to two Euros before. Say again, Birdsey. Should be his prime, shouldn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, he's been to two Euros before. He's playing well. He's scoring goals. Uh, the championship is a you know is a really high standard, and some would probably say it's, the championship is is on a par with the Turkish Super League, maybe higher. You know, so uh, for me, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd take him because uh, he can score a goal, and in in moments in in in, in getting in your Euro, European Championship games, you need players that can can can, can turn up in moments, and Ozan yeah. certainly got that. I think Abdush as well. Just to really quickly add to that, is he's t- it would be unfair to say he's towing him along, but you know, they're so well connected together. Abdush is already in that setting of being in the Turkey international squad. So, Ozan, if he doesn't think he's, you know, putting... I'm trying to think of the correct way to it. If he thinks he's not reaching the level that Abdush is, even though to some he is, then he's got something to aim for and he knows that he can raise his standard even further. Ab- yeah, on the subject of Ab- Abdush needs to add goals. That's the next thing. If you look throughout his career, goals haven't been, you know, they've been in short supply. I think... He has been terrific. His work ethic is is, is astonishing. He's, a, he's he's wonderful to watch. He his challenge going in the next four games into the summer and into next season is to add goals to his game because if City are going to if they don't get in the playoffs and they, they go again next year, he is going to be their they're not going to have Carvalho. He is going to be their main focal point. You would think in attack in terms of the playmaker. Um, he, he he can't end the season with with no goals. He's got to be hitting. Mm. Two fan, you know, he's got to be hitting ten goals realistically. From you can't have a you can't have a player in that position that doesn't contribute in terms of goals, even if he does an awful lot of work elsewhere. Is that a fair process? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, 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 completely. That's and again, it, the the skill set I've seen of him so far would suggest that he's got that ability to be able to do that. But it's the numbers; it's there in black and white. That that's where we judge players and, and maybe. Maybe Liam takes a bit of a, he'll take a more kind of wholehearted, broader approach and he'll understand the, the work that the player puts in and also the effect that he has on the team. But yeah, he's fundamentally there for the numbers, assists and goals. That's that's why you bring a player such as that in. That's why you allow him the freedom to go and express himself further at the pitch because other, otherwise it then just becomes a luxury, a hard working luxury, but someone that needs to be there to be able to provide the actual black and white end of the season goals and assists Bernsey you're listening to, you're listening to the 1904 club by the way with um, with Baz Cooper uh, with Fletch with Props and uh, me Bernsey thank you very much for taking the time uh, to to join us I don't know when you're listening it might be three o'clock in the morning and you're out walking one of the kids in a shopping trolley trying to get them to sleep I don't know whatever you might be doing is that from experience Bernsey that is an that is an experience yeah my wow. my kids noisy smelling expensive we're not good sleepers so I walk around that Sainsbury's car park with them in prams I've driven round <laughs> towns trying to get them to sleep but just, anyway, ra- just uh, random wherever, town how- not even your own town yeah. <laughs> just, just in Harrogate one of the towns <laughs> <laughs> I had to end up to Penzance. <laughs> yeah, however, however you're listening uh, to the 1904 Club, thank you very much for that. And you can always send us a tweet. Lots of people have been sending us a tweet. Let's get to the nub of the matter, fellas. I'm strangely optimistic, which is most unlike me. Angel High says, um, and I've wound up the West Brom fans by saying suddenly they 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 look a little vulnerable to me. Uh, with only one win in five. I've had quite a lot of West Brom fans. They're offering me, I bet you, 100 quid and everything like that. But Angel High says, everyone's talking about Norwich, uh, but I reckon West Brom might drop a fair few points, hopefully, and we win and push above them. Only time will tell. It's going down to the wire and it's very entertaining. Um, West Brom come back into it, fellas? Are they catchable? Uh, no, not for- not for me. I think, yeah, you said about their, I think, one win in five, but I think it's one one defeat in ten. Their form is, I think that, that what I would say about West Brom is Corbran knows how to get results. He's done it all season. They they 
have, every time you've, you've wondered if if there's going to be a bit of a drop off from Albion, like they, they lost at home to Southampton, win the next mm. game. They they are a really solid unit. They have their next two games will be interesting. Admittedly, away at, away at Leicester and away at Sheffield Wednesday, uh, and then they, they, they then they finish. But I think, yeah, I mean they finish at home to Preston, which I think is. I know Preston play at Southampton tonight. If you're listening, it may have already played, may, may have already happened. Uh, I can't, I, I just don't see West Brom are a point further ahead. I've got even better goal difference than, than City and Norwich. Uh, probably City and Norwich put together, actually. But I think, yeah, I, literally, I, I think West Brom amazing. Amazing. yeah. Have you I got that in front of you? You must yeah. have that in front of you. No, I, no, genuinely, I, I've looked at it previously, but I think they are. I think Norwich is something like plus 15 and City's plus, plus eight. And I think Albion's is plus 25, so it's not too far off. Well, it's West Brom 24, Norwich 16, Hull 8. That, that's amazing. Like a rain man. This is brilliant. I mean, I, I do nothing all, all day apart from look at permutations to try and, you know, write 800 stories a day. So, um, you know, <laughs> just make things up like the, like the mainstream media does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, media. Welcome think... to the latest edition of Mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> Gold difference in the championship. Baz Cooper from the yeah. Old Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, Bernsey, I think Albina just uh, uh, will have too much, and I think, but it is like the caveat. I always, I always think at this stage of the season, there's two caveats. The one is points on the board. I'd rather, I'd rather be Norwich. I'd rather be Ipswich. Uh, sorry, I'd rather be. I would actually uh, be West Brom because I think they've got the points on the board, um, and. and they're already in there and, and there's less work for them to do. But the other caveat is at this stage of the season, strange things happen. We saw at the weekend, you know, Leeds lose, Leicester lose, mm-hmm. um, Ipswich only draw, admittedly against a decent Borough side. So anything can happen, but City have got to do the City have got to take care of it. We'll come on to this in a bit, but City have got to do their job. They've got to win their games. Um, Pruss, West Brom. It's strange because they seem to have had fifth place boxed off for such a long period of time. But from a table point of view, I think the fact that there is just a point between themselves and Norwich, I mean, I, I it's not beyond the realms of possibility that they would get dragged into it. I mean, I don't know what dragged into it. That, that sounds like they're in a relegation ball. But that the game against Leicester, Leicester have got a point to prove after kind of... Um, wobbling somewhat. So it won't be simple. Uh, Shepherd Wednesday... I think that's, it's really hard to make of of what to make of Sheffield Wednesday because broadly there's been a really good chat about Danny Roll, hasn't they, there, but the still second bottom of the championship and, and have seemingly been there or 22nd for the best part of the season. Um so I I, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be straightforward. Uh, I understand what you're saying with Carlos. He, he he's obviously got Huddersfield um to the playoffs, and he did such a good job last season. But the the good work probably started too late in the season for them to actually make the playoffs, and they'll be absolutely doing their utmost to make sure that that's not the case this year. Norwich very much snapping at the heels. But I, I I do still think they're just within clawing distance because you have a dodgy week, you have a dodgy couple of weeks in the championship, and it's quite quick how it can close up. Because if we hadn't seen City dig out the last couple of results, then we'd have been saying they were completely out of it um, and no, with no chance, but. I, I think even though it is a bit of a gap, I think they're they're they're, they're still just about there. Obviously, Southampton done and dusted, um, but West Brom just I think they're just they're not quite hovering away out of view. They're on they're on the horizon, but close enough to 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 be there. But as you've been well, I was going to say Fletch, you've been relentlessly optimistic. And um, credit to you because they're still in and swinging when you know me. I, I was thinking that chance had gone. Uh, how 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 do you see it? The West Brom vulnerable suddenly. The West Brom fans don't think so, but Harvey says um, to us, "I think West Brom are in trouble out of the two, three tough games. Two Wednesday away at this stage of the season is tough, as we saw with Norwich." Fletch, where are you at on it? Um, I'll try and keep it short and sweet, but I think I think they're just too far away. I know it's. And only a point extra in Norwich, but you've got to think of the time that you've got to drag them back in. I think if West Brom come into it, City have to win all four games. So I'm not trying to drag a like a club political line or anything, but I think it is really now just looking after business at hand in-house and making sure that 
City win their matches because otherwise, if you start looking at West Brom and Norwich at half time, full time, whenever, um, that's when concentration could shift, I suppose. Um, I'm not saying the players and the coaching staff do that, but I think they've just got to look after themselves and make fans sure that will. they. Yeah, the fans will, of course they will. But and we I think... will. Yeah, but I think if business at hand is make sure you beat Watford first of all. You know, because we could we can rally it all up and say, well, these are in contention, these are in contention. But if they get beat at Vicarage Road or drop points in general, then we're going to go back round the other side of the circle and say, well, that's it. Now the realism's go over and the maths is nearly over. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I and I suppose just... if you listen to other podcasts that are doing the same thing but for different teams, that it'll be intriguing to see their take, won't it, Burnsy, mm. with regards to whether you say if Norwich are going, nah, it's fine, City will never catch us, or West Brom are going, nah, it's fine, we're all good, or Preston or Borough. <laughs> The different dynamics that come into it, it's uh, it's a fascinating running. Well, it is. I mean, I'm slightly worried that uh, viewers and listeners to the 1904 club think me and Fletch have had uh, personality swaps, really, because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic and he's he's suddenly oh, always, the voice of realistic uh, reality. What's the, what, what's going on? I, I, you know, you're normally, no, they've still got a chance, they've still got a chance. Well, and, they have still you know, got a chance, just, of course they have. You've still downplayed it. Yeah, got, of course, they've still got a chance. It's just I don't think West Brom come back into it if you chuck another three or four games at it. To be brutally honest, ultimately, what, what what's got to happen for City to, to be in contention at all, to even be in the conversation, is they've got to keep winning games. Yeah, they went. They needed to win at Cardiff. They did that. They needed to beat Borough. Didn't, but Norwich only drew, so it was kind of nothing lost, only a game. They needed to beat QPR. Put them to you know, put them to the sword. Now they have to go to Watford, who I think have only won five at home all season, and they've got one of the worst home records in the league. But I, I do feel, and I've said this for for weeks, that I felt that that Watford away was one of their slipperiest games. Um, that was before Tom Cleverley came in and has kind of rejuvenated them a bit, and they're starting to put get one or two good results. Probably a bit unfortunate to lose late on at Southampton at the weekend. But ultimately, it's in, City have got to do the, their own job. And I, I said this to Liam last weekend, like the, the really frustrating, gutting, galling thing would be is if City don't do their job this weekend and then at Coventry and Norwich were to lose a couple on the spin or West Brom were to lose a couple on the spin and you go, it's another case of what if. What all we can do, all City can do is go to Watford, however they do it, win the game and then you take it from there. And then you, whatever happens at Watford, if they win at Watford, you know they take it to Coventry. If they go to Coventry and win, then they know that at least there's a chance that when they play, I mean, by the time they play Ipswich next Saturday, Norwich would have already played. So that, they, it, you know, it could be all over. Norwich could have won that and it could be, the gap could be, you know, whatever it will be. It could be six points with one to play. So it's done and dusted. But it, we know if they, the next two games, if they win the next two games, it takes it to the, the, the penultimate weekend. And that's all they can do. But they've got to keep winning and if they keep winning, which they, they've got all the quality in the world to do, then they will keep keep the, the question being asked of Norwich. And if Norwich wins the last three, you, you put your hand up and you go, look, your run of form, like six wins in 10 as it is now, is it will be, you know, nine wins in 12 or whatever. Fair play, you deserve it. Mm. But then, I mean, that absolutely, we, again, so if you're using the phrase, we've said it before on the podcast, but we've said it before on the podcast, it's... That old adage about it's how you finish, not how you start. We, City have done some great things and there's been some wonderfully positive parts to look at and, and appreciate and the work that Liam's done and the coaching staff and the players that have come through. Wonderful. Uh, David Wagner was was probably a game or two away from losing his job. But if he finishes the season in the top six, I'm not saying that's forgotten, but it is to, to a large extent. I remember when it was really dicey and kind of uh, late, late... Um, like well, early autumn, very very late well, summer. But no, but they 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 like you say with the run of form bars, they've, they've picked, well inherently peaked at the right time. In January, as an example, in January I was driving. We just won at Sunderland. Um, it was a night. It's nineteenth of January because I remember it because my, my late grandfather's birthday. So it was the it was the day after we were coming back from Sunderland, um, and I was listening to Five Live on the way back, and Chris Sutton was um, doing Norwich, and Norwich were at home, I think, to Blackburn, and they mm. were talking then like before the game, um, about Wagner, about yeah. the situation Norwich were in, about Wagner potentially you know, being a game or two away from the sack. The fans had, were booing. The fans had, had almost turned on him. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, they flick mm -hmm. a switch. 
they find the rhythm, the players find confidence and some mm. form. And look at their form since since then, really. Sorry mm. to interrupt, but I might no, interrupt. But, but it's, 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 it's absolutely right, isn't it? It's absolutely right. It, it's you can look at a season, you can you can quantify it and say there's been some really good work done. You can you can kind of tick lots of bo- lots of boxes, but we're now talk- we're, we're talking now because still mathematically there's a chance for City, isn't there? Yeah. Possibly that we might be talking in a week or two where it's not, and then you, you we start to think about what if, and you look back on the season, but then you look ahead to what's coming next. But it, football is will always be about the here and now, and uh, David Wagner would have been very pragmatic to know that a manager more often than not move, gets moved on because the team are not doing well, the results are coming in, the fans are happy, which is which is is so close to where it was. But if he ends up in the in the top six. Yes, they've got a very good team, I think. I think they've got a good squad, Norwich, and they, they were woefully underperforming. But the, there's a testament there, possibly, to the patience of the ownership. You can listen to the fans, and it's a hugely fan-led kind of led organisation, Norwich City, isn't it? Which is brilliant. But sometimes you kind of go, well, hang on. It's done, it's done good work in England before, so do we just kind of ride this out? And if they do end up in the top six, it'll be, it'll be a, a, a wonderful turnaround for Norwich City, and maybe just a yardstick for Hull City to look at and go, well, then, do we then say we've done lots of good work? And then Liam goes again next season, learns from this season, and then moves him up into the top six and stays in the top six and you know, carries on the great work that he's done. Like I said, these are all quite hypothetical conversations now, but it just goes to show absolutely what a season is judged on, how you, how you finish it, not how you start it. What I would say as well about about what's, what's in their favour is they... You know, Liam spoke all, for, for a number of weeks about you know his players peaking in March and April, and mm. particularly the attacking players. And I think we've seen in the last couple of games, well, Cardiff, Borough, and um, and QPR eight goals in three games. You know, their front players are starting to connect. Their front players are starting to look good. Obviously, we had Liam Delap back on on Saturday, and in his twenty minute cameo, he came close to scoring, shot clean off the line, set one up for almost set one up for uh, Traore, but. Great, def- I think it was Clark Sold to head it away just as Troy away was getting ready to head it at goal. I should at goal from a yard out. Um, so having Delap back is is big, and you know they've got a front four at the minute that have that found their scoring torch. Um, and and that is you know, as you say, it's about how you finish. So if they if they do win the next four games, which I know that they've never done, you know, this team has never done that. You know, there aren't many championship teams apart from Le- probably Leeds and Leicester that have won, you know, four or five on the spin in the championship mm. season. It's pretty hard to do, but if they do it, they, they, they are going to be very close. The worst case scenario is they finish, th- they beat Coventry, they beat Ipswich, and they beat Plymouth. They finish three points outside the top six, then it, it's, it's, then, then there's a different conversation. But they've got, they, all they can do is keep winning their mm. games and see where it takes them. Just one final point before we move on is I think it's another conversation for another day, but I think this season the the opportunity has been so narrow just because of the firepower as well that you've got from Leeds, Leicester and Southampton as well. Because look how far ahead they've been for a significant number of months. Normally, Normally you've got teams on the edge of the playoffs who could finish third or even get into the automatic spaces. So it's been, um, they've all been trying to run towards a narrowing gap. And, that's um, a great point, Flash. That's a really good point. You basically, and for, for much of it, West Brom have been away as well. So you've had five, six teams chasing one place. And bar Rotherham, you know, the cha- Prush, you've, you've spoken about this numerous times about Wednesday's form. And you mm. know, pretty much since Danny Roll came in, their form has been, has been really good. And, you know, if, if you took that, the chunk of time that he's been in as manager, they'd be further up the league. But it goes to show, rather than aside, just how difficult this league is, yeah. how tough it is, and how you know, there's so many good teams. Even you go all the way down to, to you know to the likes of Wednesday, they have, have been in good form. You know, Huddersfield, Stoke, there are some some big clubs, some good clubs down there, and it is hard. And shoot, City have basically been shooting for one place for probably mm. about six months. So it's well, it's, that, it's rock solid. It is. It's so. I, I think, and it, it does remind me of, of a chat. We've had about where City should believe themselves to be, and and any fan base worth its salt believes in the absolute best of what their team is. But the Championship is that league, which again, it's it's, it's very much the um, the standard kind of um, opinion on it about it being unpredictable. But you, you steam into the Championship most seasons, and you you start looking at the table before balls kicked, and you and you're kind of looking through it, and you 
you, you end up getting to a ballpark, I think, of about 20 teams that realist, they realistically think they can get in the top six. Now, there's a broader debate about the size of the Premier League clubs that have come down. But then Ipswich completely smash that to pieces and say, well, well, you can also do this as well. Now, whether that's a, a special team, whether that's the chemistry of a special team, whether that's a team possibly operating on a bigger budget than we think. It was a big budget in League One, so they needed to get themselves out of League One. But the work that they've done has been wonderful. The fact that you've got a Plymouth side who came up with them that are 18th currently, just a few points out of the bottom three, shows how tough that particular division is. And then you've got a Rotherham side, as you said, Baz, bouncing between the two leagues. It shows how tough it is to get in the, in the Championship and maintain it. But across the board, I mean, you've got the three former Premier League teams that have come down. West Brom, Bounce between the two. Norwich City bounce between the two. Hull City, not so much. Coventry, playoff finalists. Borough in the playoffs. Preston, quite well funded from what I hear. So possibly them finishing 10th or below. There's, there's, there's heads to be scratched and questions to be answered there. And I love Ryan to bits, of course, but they are an ambitious football club. Cardiff City, former Premier League team. Bristol City, we think, should be doing better. Sunderland have aspirations at the top flight once again. Swansea, Watford. I'm, I'm just naming the teams. Blackburn tailed off towards the end of last season. They sh they should have been in the top six, but they lost the two best players. So you you, you work your way through the whole thing, and without being twee or, or, or trying to dress up anything, Hull City being consistently around fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. It's what it's what we've. It's that relative discussion of what um, success is or what failure is. We, we we judge them about being in the top six because they've been in the top six. We've seen them beat teams comprehensively that are in the top six. So why why shouldn't that be the aim? Well, because there's another 20 teams that want to do exactly the same thing, don't they? And they've all got quality. You know, they've all got good managers, they've got big budgets, and they've got good players. And you yeah. know, that is that that is the truth of it. Burnsy. Okay. Yeah, I, I think if they're outside the top 10, I, I think it's relative failure for them. But I can see the progress. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's coming together. In, in terms of what I saw on Saturday, I was very impressed, which is why, you, you know, I, I actually, this is me talking here, the voice of doom. I could actually, the way they played on Saturday, and I don't know the relative merits of QPR, but they picked up recently. I, I, I could see them winning the last four games if they play like that and and fingers crossed they do can we change the subject we touched on him because Prutz met him uh, on Sunday night to Jacob Greaves um, let me read a, a few tweets coming into the um, 1904 club Andrew um, says whatever happens we should just take in and enjoy the outstanding player Jacob Greaves has become while he's still a City player for the rest of this season uh, we'll maybe talk about that Jordan Garnett says, my head says the table will probably stay roughly the same, but my heart is clinging on to the slim hope of sneaking in. Can we talk about the walking Rolls Royce that is Jacob Greaves being in the team of the season? He's a 25 to £30 million pound player for me. I really hope we keep him. And uh, Tiger Door says, I think it would help if you binned off your frustration for some optimism. I'm trying, Tiger Door. I'm trying. <laughs> I'd be interested in how likely you guys think we'll be able to keep hold of Greaves and retain or sign one, two, or all of the loan signings. We'll maybe part the loan signings for now. And I noticed Baz in the paper has started the transfer speculation for the summer. We'll come to that in a bit. But um, where are we on on Greaves' future, Fletch? It's interesting, isn't it? Because what you've got is the ingredients of someone who, a bit like Louis, is a hometown lad, has been through the academy, um, on Radio Humberside last night, James Hogarth produced a brilliant stat. Six years ago this week, Greavesy, Keen Lewis Potter, Robbie McKenzie, Will Mannion and a couple of us were all playing in the East Riding Senior Cup for Hull City <laughs> against Beverly in like the semi-final or whatever it was. Who won? I can't remember. Ah. <laughs> um, He's a tough last Beverly. I think she won. <laughs> <laughs> knocked him over like Skittles. I think he's, he's, he's blossomed so well this year after what he showed last year as well. I think he, we touched upon it well. His stature, his physique, first of all, he just looks like an incredible athlete who draws attention 
And even when he does draw attention on the field, he's still got the capabilities to bring the ball out. I mentioned it a while ago. I think he's had a really nice blend of different styles of centre-half alongside him. If you go back to when he broke through in the first place, Reese Burke was the one who was carrying the ball out and he would sit in. He's taken on that responsibility for- alongside Jones. Look at him doing it for Luton in the Premier League. I'm really pleased about that because he was yeah. uh, he was a nice player, Reese Burke. But but Jacob Greaves is a better player than Reese Burke. He is now. Yeah, I I, gen- I think he is now. I think if he wanted to be really harsh on himself, he would want more goals. He said that himself, so it's okay me saying it. He's all and Alfie said the same as well. Um, but yeah, it's. I can't put a price tag on him because I don't want him to go. <laughs> I think <laughs> nobody wants him to go. And but I, I, I'm I'm drawn to persuasion that I think he'll stay because I think his his heart is in the city. To be brutally honest, and even if City do stay down this season, I still think he's part of the building blocks to then go on and get promoted next year. I think he's the kind of player who would quite happily sit and wait a year because there's no tournament coming up next year. If he really thinks he's that ability to then break into the England team after missing out on the under 21s it's a very it's a, it's a it's a long journey but that's what he'll have his heart set on and I think Hull City is the home he should do it in I, I wonder if there was a conversation yeah. between Tan and Steve Holland because the Tan Kessler was sat with Steve Holland at Stamford Bridge um during Chelsea's 6-0 win over Everton I wonder if there's a conversation about Jacob Prutz I know you've got to get going because of your day job so just on the subject of of Greavesy. Uh, Those bins don't collect themselves bad, tell you that much. Well, that's exactly it. How, uh, what, how, do you, how much do you rate him in, in terms of what happens over the summer? What's your thought process on it? Yeah, he's. I, I, I do think cynically that every club's a selling club. We said we've discussed Jaden in similar brackets, haven't we? And if somebody comes in, if they look at Jacob and say, it's between 20 and 30 million quid, then sorry, he's got to go. Um, but Going back to what Fletch was saying, he's one of those players that I presume was a fan that you, you dream of having, don't you? Because of the locality, because of what he then becomes to the side. And take the sentiment away from it, he's just a very good footballer. A very good footballer. Does his job, leads the team well, as and when he's asked to. Um, seems to get what Hull City is, which I think is fundamental for a young player coming through. Professionally, you're kind of saying that that part of it will always be in his heart, as Fletch was saying. But to see him holding up the shirt of another football club, a Premier League football club, um, you, you can you can picture it. I'm not stop me trying to move him on before he needs to be uh, before anything needs to happen. But it's it'll be fascinating to see where he goes. Imperative that City keep hold of him for what they want to do with him. Um, but it, I, I think that there's definitely a player in there that can play in the Premier League, and we we'll only know when he gets tested. We, we'll only know whether that comes with City or another side, and then, and then we'll see how. That works out for him and it'll be life-changing stuff because playing in the Premier League 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, it is was was a big deal. You, you get he gets himself in the Premier League now and, and gets a decade in there. My word, that that is genuinely kind of life-changing for him, his family, and his and his kind of extended family. So it would be a shame from City's point of view, from a professional point of view, it would be a very, very tough decision for him to make, I think, if someone comes in and the, the bid's right, the amount's right. And Somebody shows a real keen interest in making him a professional, uh, a Premier League professional footballer. I don't think this. I, I saw a link earlier, earlier on this week with Sheffield United. Obviously, the link will come there because Chris Wilder was manager at Middlesbrough two years ago when they tried to sign him and came quite close to signing him from City. Um, I don't think there's any any danger of him going to Sheffield United, and that'd be a, a bad bad move for me. Um, be a sidestep, wouldn't it? If yeah, absolutely. Best. Yeah, absolutely. If Greavesy is is to go. Um, then it's to the Premier League because he's Premier he's ready to go and play in the Premier League now for me. Um, I, I get the impression that uh, City don't want to... Well, they, obviously, they don't want to sell him. That goes without saying. I, I, I get the impression that they, they are desperate to keep him this summer. Um, there's a, there is a question financially of, 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 having, of having to sell somebody, whether that's Jacob, whether that's um, Jaden. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out um, and how... How Ajun can balance the finances between staying within financial fair play, but also giving Liam the tools to go again next year. Um, so that'll be a really interesting one to watch. But I think you know, for me, Jacob watching him develop this season has been has been a, a pleasure. It's been a, a, a real pleasure to see, particularly actually in the last 
since he picked up his, I know we've covered this before, but it's worth reiterating again. I think he went 15 game, 14 or 15 games from when he picked up his ninth booking at Sheffield Wednesday on New Year's Day to when he got his 10th against Leicester, um, which showed a real maturity in in both, well, just in his game and the way he he managed himself, the way he dealt with himself. And he has, he, he, he was firm. I saw somebody tweet, that they were surprised that um, Greaves was named in the team of the year above Rodon. And I'm, I'm thinking, really? Now, for me, Greaves has been the standout. You know, Vestergaard's had a good year. Um, obviously, Ampadu's had a good year. There's been one or two others. For me, Greaves has just been, given his age um, and where City have come from and the way he's developed, um, I, I think he's he's been he's been sensational. And Yeah, I suppose that comparison, Pit Bass, Joe Rodon's an international footballer from the Premier League, so he should yeah. be up there. Yeah. And that's and where definitely... Jacob's got to look to. That, that's who he's got to chase down. This division first, then the next. Absolutely. And it's no coincidence for me that the two games he missed over Easter at home to Stoke uh, and away at Leeds, they lost. Mm. Um, that, that coincidence isn't lost. Uh, he is that important, both defensively to how they play, but also getting the ball down and, and going forward and, and, and playing forward. But I, I can't mention Greavesy without mentioning Alfie Jones because nobody has played more than Alfie Jones this season. And he kind of, for me, always goes under the radar, does Alfie. Um, and he is, you know, he's getting towards that level. I know Grant McCann always used to refer to him as the Rolls Royce centre half. Uh, he, he's right up there in, in that as well. And, and City have got two of the best centre halves in the division. And, and all the focus is on Jaden and, and, and Jacob. But, I, you know, th- th- there's bound to be interest in Alfie as well because he's such a good footballer. He is, he is you know, he is the modern day centre back. He can head it, he can kick it. But he is a ball playing centre half, um, and I think there'll be interest in him. Burns, you've got your finger in the air. I was just—it's Prutz, have you got to go? I have, unfortunately. I, I can leave you to it. it yeah, that's fine. I, we we don't all have to go. <laughs> well, no, that's fine. We, we, we'll we'll stay and chat and gossip about you. So, what? Um, you, what? It's, you said you weren't doing it anymore, Burnsy. You said it was only Baz that said all the things. And then Fletch said the same about you, Burnsy. Burnsy, you said the same about you. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're ready, exactly. darling. Have you yes. got your post, post round to do or something? I've, like I've got that. that. Mil- 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 to deliver, post to drop off. The good thing is, if, if you... How long, how long, much longer are you talking on here? Well, I'm going to wait until I see you on my screen that's, behind you. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted <laughs> you to do, because I'm that much of a narcissist. So if you could do that, that'd be great. <laughs> For those, that, for those that are just listening, um, David Prutton works for Sky Sports, and um, it, behind me we have Sky Sports News on here, and the, he will Always. be appearing on Sky Sports News momentarily yes. to talk. What are you going to talk about? Uh, I don't know. They never send me the questions. They just say we'll talk about stuff, and I say go on, then it's fine. Okay, give us a wave oh, yeah. anyway. Yeah, I shall. Anyway, check. Out Prutton, that. No, no, nice to see you. <laughs> It'd be like, what, it'd be like someone else's hand. Look, that doesn't even look like mine, does it? I oh, know. This, 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 this. He needs to shepherd's crook him. He'll never get on Sky here. Sorry, he needs to. Be <laughs> lovely. Goodbye. See you, see Thanks for Ross. coming. <laughs> there you go. Uh, dear. Just the on, on the subject of Jacob Greaves, just uh, at the risk of repeating myself, because I've always said it, because I think he's the best um, player I've ever seen come through the club in terms of young player developed uh, by the club. And um, I, I, I always thought he would play in the Premier League. I think he'll play in the Premier League next season. Uh, I'm hoping it's with City, but I think if they don't go up, I think he'll probably go. I take your point about the finances, but I also think, uh, with no great insight on this, that the, the, there will be the player's ambition. He's, he's seen Jared Bowen go to the Premier League. He's seen his good pal Keen Lewis Potter go to the Premier League. And and you've got to think about it. Prutz made the point earlier, you know, going to the Premier League, you, your your wages and your prospects, you know, on a four-year contract, you, you're, you're earning millions, aren't you? you, you and from a from a personal point of view you want to test yourself as a yeah. as a footballer you you want to play at the highest level of you can as you can and see what you do i agree with you on Sheffield united I don't, they're not going to be there next season to to me it's it's maybe somebody like a a, a west ham would look at him well brentford uh, if, if i was west ham haven't they Brent, well brentford it, 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 exactly you 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 could absolutely see Brentford. So I think 
regardless of what happens with City, he'll be a Premier League footballer next season. Um, and, I, you know, I, I would wish him all the best with it. I, I think it's a delight to watch. I still don't think we're seeing the best for him. I think he's got that, I'm, I'm going to go old school here, he's got that Franz Beckenbauer ability to come out of defence with the ball. I don't mm. think we see it enough, really. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 as, as Andrew said in our first tweet there, enjoy him while you can. Uh, well, think, credit to him just to, for, for getting in the championship team of the year. Just to add one more thing on why I think he would be, you know, coerced to staying an extra year if he has got his mind on moving or whatnot, is that you, you've mentioned it there, Jared Bowen. Now, I agree. Well, I, I know that there are different positions, but you have to remember, I actually think Jared was ready to leave the club in, at the start of the 2019 2020 season. I thought he was ready to make that step, but he stayed. And in the end, he got sold off in January, which I, you know, we don't. It, it, he went in the end, and then we saw what happened. And so I don't know if, you know, the ambitions at the time, at the start of that season, probably align with what the club are now. They're highly ambitious. So if the dream is that they're pretty certain, which I think they are, and that they're going to go up next year if they stay down, I, don't see why Greavesy wouldn't kick around for another year and be, you know, I know he's, he's got no first names on the team sheet, but to us, he would be one of the first names on the team sheet and he'd be, want to be part of that starting 11 that takes him up. He's played, I mean, the thing is, he's 23 and he's played 200 games at senior level, you know, and I think that is rare uh, for, for any player to, at that age to have played that level. You know, you think of this season, He's th- the only three games he's missed are through suspension. Um, he, yeah. missed the, he missed the Plymouth game earlier in the season after picking up his fifth book in Ipswich. He's obviously, as we touched on before, he's missed the two games over Easter, having picked up 10. Um, that's something, he, that's a development thing that he needs to look at going forward mm-hmm. about his, you know, how many cautions he picks up. But in terms of his availability, which is what managers want, you know, and, and Alfie as well, both of them have played. Um, you know, I think Alfie's played 41 of the 42 games. He's only missed one. Jacob's played 39 of the 42. So, um, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting one to, to see how it develops. The club want to keep him. That's been made clear to me. They don't want to let him go. Um, but as Burnsy touched on, it will come. a lot will come down to what the player wants, uh, you know, and, and also what type of money is, is slapped on the table. If somebody is slapping 25, I don't think they will. I don't think, I'm not sure that is what's going to happen. But if somebody comes and slaps 25 million quid on the table and says, we want to sign Jacob Greaves, I think that is a very, very difficult conversation that City have to have. Uh, and that is, that is in reality, that's big money. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But I, he is he is a wonderful, wonderful footballer. He's a great lad. Um, I, I love what it's been. A You know, I, I think we can all, I think I can speak on behalf of all three of us and say that, you know, we, we've had the pleasure of watching him progress over the last three or four years at City, and it's been it's been a pleasure. Um, and whatever happens going forward, he's a credit to himself, his family, and the football club. Mm. Yeah, uh, well said. Can I can I throw one in here because I'm I'm looking at the time and we've yeah. not got that much left on the 1904 club. And I right. I hadn't heard this, but I'm going to mention it because you know we, we should talk about all sorts of things. Tom uh, tweeted us to say. You think the recent good performances are down to Rossini changing anything, or this rumoured clearing of the air talks between the players Tan and Liam Rossini? Um, and Chris uh, says, are, are such rumours of clear the air talks true? What's all that about? I'd heard rumours of the odd issue, but that's football, and they were just rumours. I hadn't heard anything about it. Baz, any insight? Is there anything in that? I, I've I've not heard anything. I, I I'm not right. sure. I'm not sure if three one, you know, they, they go to Cardiff and win three one because they've had, you know, um, clear the air talks or anything like that. I think, you know, it's natural throughout the season that players get frustrated, man, staff get frustrated. I think Liam is, himself has got frustrated with, with aspects of, of, of the performances, and you know, he, he's, you know, he's a manager that wears his heart on his sleeve, and he, he said certain things in the aftermath of games that would have, you know, annoyed players naturally, but I. I'm not sure. You have to be careful. I think it's one of them, isn't it? You have to be careful with with Chinese whispers. There was a lot of, you know, there's there's always rumours about certain things, and you know, I, I'm I'm not sure that I've that I'm a, I've certainly not heard that there's there's been clearly air talks with with the manager and players. 
No, okay. neither that's, have that's I. Fine. I. Right, okay. I, I haven't either, but, you know, people send us stuff, so it's it's right and proper that we um, uh, we give it an airing and see where we got. Can I just... Uh, one quick question for you. I see you've started the transfer speculation for next season, Buzz. Well, it, it, you've got to join... You've got to... You know, you've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? I don't particularly enjoy it. Oh, I'm, um, is, I'm not having a pop, so no, you know, this is you, you've you put a name out there today. You're usually incredibly well informed. Tell us the name. name. Uh, have I, Josh Murphy? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's some suggestion that he's been looked at, but I, 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 I would be surprised if, if, if. Yeah, I think. Look, given his his profile uh, and given his record, uh, I, I would be surprised. That, that he, if he wasn't a player they were looking at, um, you know, he's a free transfer and he's 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 experienced um, at the age of twenty nine. But I think, so I think it's, it would be remiss of City not to be looking at players in the lower leagues that are, that are performing, they're performing well, particularly creative players. We know that they like wingers. They're obviously that's something that they need. You know, again, we'll we'll cover this throughout the summer, I'm sure. But um, that players out wide is something they're going to need again because. We don't know what's going to happen with Jaden Philogene. Jaden Philogene may or may not still be at the club come the first game of the season, or more more pertinently, come the end of the track, the summer window. Um, Zorori is is going back to Burnley. Lakilo is 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 out out of favour and uh, is out on loan. Um, you've got um, Ryan Longman as well, who's been doing okay down at um, at, um, at, at oh. Millwall, but isn't in favour, and uh, so. I think it would be remiss of, of the, the, the scouting unit um, to, to not to not investigate. I think just to promote a previous pod that we did out in Turkey, we spoke to Stuart White, who's the chief scout at City, and he gave a really, really fascinating insight into what goes on behind the scenes and just how many players they go and look at. So mm. give that a listen. That will give give fans a really good insight into you know what goes on behind the scenes and how they players throughout the, the season um, and it, I wouldn't be surprised if Murphy was one they were looking at along with you know probably 10 or other 10 or 12 other clubs in, in a a lot of clubs will be looking at a lot of similar players this season because Monday's going to be tight and if you can get somebody like Murphy who's a goal scoring winger on, on a free transfer it's a relatively risk free move I would say Um we bet, I'm looking at the time. We better yeah. sort of head towards the conclusion. You you wanted to just a reminder that we're doing the 1907 club live at the the New what club. club. What football club is that then? <laughs> <laughs> the 1904 you, club. The 1904 club. Are you moonlighting with me? I don't. I don't. I'm I just have a that. Own, <laughs> you know, I fast forwarded three years. It's like the Doctor Who edition of um, of the <laughs> 1904 Club. We're doing the 1904 Club. It was because it's on the 7th of May, yeah, um, on Tuesday, that. 7th of May. Uh, tickets are available. And you wanted to mention the Academy, didn't you, Bas? Yeah, we had some questions um, a few weeks ago about the Academy, didn't we? Um, wondering why the hell they were quite negative. Um, and there's been a lot... I say a lot. There's been, you know, a, a narrative that's been pushed by one or two over the last few months about the the academy. So I wanted to give to, to credit them really. They've they've won four in a row. Um, they, well, the, the five unbeaten. They drew with uh, Birmingham, beat Colchester, Burnley, Watford, uh, and Wigan. Um, there's Play a QPR there. today as well. Yeah, they, there was. I think there was a six-one in there against Burnley, um, and they play QPR this afternoon. So if if you're listening, this is coming out coming to you on Tuesday. They. You, you haven't got a lot of time, unfortunately, um, owing to um, when we've got we've been able to record. But they play QPR at the MKM Stadium, free entry to everybody. Um, Gunning for five gate, five wins in a row against the QPR side that are doing well. I just wanted to give them some credit because it's, it's one of those that you know academy team. And, I, and I'll, I'll reiterate what I said to you, Burns, when, when we were out in Antalya, that you know young players are inconsistent. They um, there's, I think they've got 21 players out on loan, of which a fair chunk of those are, are under 20, w- would be in the under 21 side. Um, they are trying to play the whole academy from from under 21s right down to you know not to three. They're trying to play in Liam's style, uh, which takes time to adapt to, um, and they're trying to they're trying to make players better. And you know results at, at youth level aren't the be all and end all. And I think I think you know. It's, it's, it's worth mentioning that if they lose four or five games in a row, suddenly the, the, the whole academy staff don't need, you know, lining up before a firing squad and the whole thing needs to be ripped up. It is kids, it's, it's, it's youth football. 
and it's about making players ready for uh, for, for for professional football um, and men's football. And the, you know, ultimately, a lot of them, a lot of their best players or their their better players, their their, their more experienced players, are, are are out on loan playing men's football either in League One, League Two, or, or um, in the National League. So, but I just wanted to highlight the fact they've won four in a row and they could make it five. And they play again at Peterborough away at Peterborough on Friday. So that was that was something I just wanted to raise. Having on the on the back of spoken to a really impressive young fella called Raj Pallet, um, who who plays for the under twenty ones, and I guess he'll be playing this afternoon. Uh, mm-hmm. He's part of um, the PFA's Aims program to try and encourage more more um, basically more players to come from an Asian background to play to play football. And Raj is. It, signed in the summer um and, and he's part of this program trying to encourage encourage it and it's it's a really positive thing that he's involved in that the football club are involved in and um, because that that is a huge bed of talent that is that remains untapped and and hopefully in in, in the future that's something that will change good luck to him and yeah. good luck to everybody at the academy um are, are, is that us done for the day uh fellas I think so, yeah yeah any other business Fletch? Uh, no, I'd, I'd say just to add to your point there, but as always, if you are a City fan and you're local, there's always community projects and things going on over the summer, which will probably get advertised like, you know, you know, summer holiday camps and that sort of thing for your kids to go and play football. So if you're like um, Bernsey and you're fed up of, you know, pushing your kids around in a trolley in a car park in a supermarket, <laughs> then, um, you know, send them there for three or four days. I've I'm, no, I've had idea. I like the yeah, trolley idea. You. I'm going to go to Aldi. I'll be, if I'm, you might see me later on with a trolley in Aldi. What to do? Fletch, will will you send me back my reality tablets, and I'll send you back your optimism? Tablets. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do. We'll do a little swap again. deal. Yeah, <laughs> and, and see what happens. Um, you know, yeah, let's, let's, just to finish, see what they do at Watford. The um, nine, yeah, 1904 Club Live, May the seventh. Tickets are on sale via Eventbrite. But you you can get them in the in the show notes of this show. Uh, they are th- tickets of price three pounds. Money goes to charity. Walton Street Club. Uh, still a lineup of guests yet to be announced. Um, but unfortunately, we have got Burnsy and, and Fletch will be there as well, just to chaperone can we, him. Um, can we push Burnsy in, in a trolley? That'd be great, wouldn't it? To, to just take him up the aisle with everyone clapping. The, <laughs> does he fit in the baby <laughs> health and now, safety? Right? Health and safety. I'd, I'd get in Sorry. it. I'm not sure I'd get I'm, out of it. Am I, I, am I off qualified? So I'll do the risk assessment. Buzzing. Right, that's it. That's all we've got time for. Um, three points, please, City at Watford. If you go into Vicarage Road, and I know there's a, a, a fair herd that are going down the M1, safe travels. Here's to an 11th away win of the season and staying in that playoff race. Prutz, uh, Prutz yeah, thanks for your time, Prutz. You've gone. All the best. Um, it'll, be on my telly, it'll be on my telly behind me. Fletch, he's there now. He's there it. now. He is as well. He's, he looks like he's got. A, he looks like he's been on the uh, on the sunbed in the time he's, he's left it. <laughs> the, the producer of Sky Sports News has been. He's got a tomato he's, face. He's, he's, got, he, so, anyway. he's got a little microphone in the corner, and he knew when to come to us. <laughs> anyway, Fletch, thank you, Burnsy, as always, thank the optimist. You. All the best, and thank you everybody for listening for watching. Keep getting in touch. Um, appreciate all your messages. We do read them all, um, even if we don't have time to respond to them. Thank you for watching, listening. And uh, this has been the 1904 Club, and we will be back next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>